next one then. So, part uh, two of the Ultrabook Trio session tonight, uh, December the 16th on ultrabooknews.com slash live. You can follow us on Twitter at Ultrabook News and on Facebook we are Ultrabook News as well. Please uh, follow and if you're watching on YouTube, hit the like button please, it helps. Um, we're now going to take a look at the Toshiba Z830. If you missed part one, we looked at the UX31, uh, just a quick overview. Uh, in this video, I'll just do five, six, seven minutes going around the Toshiba Z830 European version. It's the satellite version, not the Portage, um, but it kind of equates to the Z830 Portage in the USA. It's the one with the Core i5, 4 gig of RAM, 128 gig uh, SSD, and the Intel Centrino Wi-Fi matte screen. But let's just uh, go around the device uh, very, very quickly. Uh, there'll be follow-up videos in this series, which we'll go over uh, in a bit more detail, but let's just give you a, a quick overview of the device. Anyway, so um, first thing to notice, this is significantly lighter, and I will bring, just very briefly, the UX31 in there, because um, I want you to show, to show that it's almost exactly the same size uh, in every direction, height as well, although the front of the UX31 is slightly thinner than the uh, Z830. But the Z830 in one hand, in that corner, is really, really light. There's a significant difference. You can't really pick up the UX31, well, I can't pick up the UX31 very comfortably in one hand, but I can with the Z830. It's only 200 grams less, but because of the weight distribution, maybe, it feels uh, so much lighter. Anyway, plastics, no, let me get this right. This is uh, aircraft uh, metal, what do they call it? Duraluminum. It's definitely not as thick as the metal on the UX31, uh, but it's a nice a nice finish. Again, it's brushed, um, but it does feel a little bit plastically to the touch. When you go underneath, I believe that really is plastic un under there. But let's just quickly go around the device uh, first. At the front, again, like most Ultrabooks, there's, there's nothing there apart from a couple of speaker output ports. Now, what they've done, I've seen inside these, they have a little channel here, uh, and the speaker's a little bit a little bit the way back. So this is the output port for the speaker. The speaker's not directly behind that. And they've done a pretty good job of getting some good volume, good good quality out of here. The UX31 is slightly better, and the Acer S3 is is slightly worse. Going around the side, then, I like that design. It's not uh, as flashy as the UX31, but it's professional. I think that's quite a nice professional design, and it's super super thin. It's uh, very attractive, I think. USB 3 and Kensington lock port giving you, again, an idea this is more sort of professionally professionally oriented. Um, full Ethernet 10100 gig E port. Fan input, f sorry, fan output. Fan input is underneath there. USB 2, USB 2. So you've got two USB 2s and a USB 3. Full size HDMI, DC in, full size VGA as well. So you're not going to need any adapters here. You'll be able to just take this without adapters and as long as people have got cables at the other end wherever you're going you should be fine on the other side also pretty useful I think is the Skype sorry Skype useful for Skype separate mic and headphone um, uh, audio ports then we've got um, an SD card slot cards don't go fully in but it's an SD XC uh, card slot as well so those of you with SDXC cards that you're using on cameras, you'll be able to uh, use higher, higher density cards on there. Underneath the device, then I showed the fan, but of course, nothing really else. It's not as clean as UX31. There's a couple of stickers here, and of course, you've got the, uh, you've got the screws on here, which um, I have to say allows you, if you want to break your warranty, to get into here um, and max out the RAM slot to 4 gig. There's 2 gig on board, but you can max it out to 6 gig if you change the 2 gig for a 4 gig slot. You can change the SSD if you can find a, uh, um, a matching SSD that's better. And I believe there's also a PCI Express mini slot for a 3G module. I don't think it's wired. I've got a wired antenna though. Okay, quickly. Does it do the one finger lift test? Yes, it does, and that's mainly because the screen is is really, really thin. This is the thinnest and lightest of all the screens on all the Ultrabooks so far, late 2011. But there is a bit of um, flexibility in it. Like if I do that, you'll be able to see the flex in that, and you also see the bounce in the screen as well. 
it's not going to be too much of a problem for most people but if you're using that webcam that's going to be a major problem as that bounces up if you're using a shared uh, office table as well people jogging the office table as I'm going to do now it's going to annoy the hell out of you so maybe a consideration for office use screen here is uh, matte so that's really nice for <coughs> excuse me outdoor or mobile usage but it is a 1366 by 768 uh, resolution I'm not going to switch the screen on in this um, in this video going down to the keyboard we have what is a slightly compressed vertically uh, set of keys um, there's a bigger frame at the top and in fact the uh, Z830 is a slightly deeper device from from bottom to, to back than the other two we're testing tonight but the key set is nice uh, the key feel the key um, usability is nice there's a little bit of getting used to this compressed vertical and a little bit of watching out for these buttons on the right I haven't had ma made any major mistakes hitting for example page up instead of enter you've got generous uh, cursor buttons you've also got backlight plus the contrast on the buttons themselves black white on black is pretty good for for low light use anyway so it's a pretty good functional keyboard power button and two well these are initially programmed as Toshiba eco mode and screen um, output uh, change but you can program these two keys so you can potentially program, program them for anything you want at the bottom here we've got um, the um, synaptic touchpad uh, seems to be working very well separate uh, mouse buttons on the bottom now for those that you like traditional mouse buttons and, and rather than the tap to click these are nice a little bit hard at the moment I guess they'll soften up but they have quite a nice feel to them uh, the left one in this case is harder than the, than the right one, but they are uh, they're pretty good. Um, the indicator lights are underneath there, which is a nice touch as well, I think. You can switch the mouse pad off with one hit on this button here. So they've thought about some nice, uh, nice features on this. Um, in terms of sort of weight, build quality, it's a little bit um, more plasticky than, for example, the UX31, but it's certainly not uh, cheap looking. Uh, the only thing I think is quite cheap for, to my eyes is the the font on the keycaps. I think it looks a bit uh, cheap, but uh, that's just Toshi Toshiba's choice. It's not really that important, I guess. And overall, looking great. So, um, just want to answer one question on this that I know a lot of people have been talking about. It's the fan. So this version I have here, this this sample I have here, which is from Toshiba uh, Germany. Um, does have quite a noisy fan. It's not just air noise, it has motor noise on it as well to the point where I think it's a little bit too much for working in a quiet room 